Welcome to a new Harry's Garage and today's car is the chunky great Defender that you see behind me. Its official title is the Concept SVX and this car was created by this new division at Jaguar Land Rover called Special Vehicle Operations and there was an event taking place in Austria, uh, legal reasons I can't tell you much about it, but up high up in the Alps over the winter of 2014 and 2015 and that's what this car was created for. So it had to be modded, heavily modified in fact, uh, to operate in really snowy conditions low temperatures and have ample performance on the snow so there's a whole load of mods on it um, there were 10 created in all uh, one got a bit wrecked on the event and um, another's on uh, exhibition somewhere and the other eight were sold off to collectors and I was very lucky to be one of those eight anyway I'm going to take you around the car load of cool details on this car like no other defender so we look at this car, what gives it this start, this chunky look? Well, the key to it uh, are these new wheels and tyres on this car. They're 37 inch tall, way bigger than a normal Defender uh, tyre. And if you're wondering why it's got all those bolts around the rim, well, what these tyres are, they run at really low pressure and you actually bolt the tyre onto the rim. Um, and then you can run it down to like 10 PSI or something like that. It's only about 15 PSI in these tyres as they are now. Um, 37 inch tall and then they're 12 and a half inches wide and part of the tread if you look at the tread um, you have this gap here so this operates on the surface and then as it sinks in then these cleats come in as well um, so it's really good in snow and mud it's actually completely useless on tarmac as i've discovered um, and then to cover those wheels and tires the next thing had to be done was to create these unique arches these eyebrow arches that that come out much wider than a regular defender and their body color as you can see then at the front we've got chopped down a uh, bumper a, a unique bumper on this car this monster winch a 10,000 pound winch um, it's what it can pull and then the a-frame defender you've seen before um, and then a black surround on the grill and these um, trick xenon lights um, that would I think were done on a limited run defender right at the end of the run up top we have those spotlights those LEDs crazy candle power um just at night it just makes it like daylight once those come on the rope across the front um that's a pure ornament um but it looks ace i have to say um it's fixed either side and then right round the vehicle is this roll cage that goes right across the front around the um, windscreen as you can see and then a roof um box on top um when I open up inside, you'll see the roll cage is actually inside as well and bolts through the roof to the exterior one. Um, but what a thing. Started life as a 110 um, Defender crew cab, as you can see. So it's got the pickup at the back. Um, but let's take it outside because I think it'd be easier to see this car once we get it out and out in the open because um, unfortunately we can't drive it on the road. It's not road legal, but there's plenty of space around the farm where we'll go and try it out. Oh. Well, first thing is, it's a bit of a clamber up. Um, typical Defender inside. And when I start it up, you might tell it's a diesel. It's actually a 2.2 litre diesel, but it's been had a, a bowler treatment. So it's got their full, it's about 185 horsepower now rather than a regular 120. Lot of torque. Um, big wheel. We'll go into the details. I want to get it um, down at the bottom of the farm and I'm going to go around the details then. But as I move off, you will hear rattling going on with the suspension because one of the key things with this car, it has this sort of their race, bowler race suspension, so these bill steins, but they're rose jointed. So you'll hear the suspension rattle away and it doesn't really make it very good for when you're riding on tarmac because all you hear. Anyway, let's get down the bottom and then we'll go through some more details there. It's quite pokey because it's quite a lot of torque. 500 Newton meters of uh, torque on it with a modded uh, turbocharged disc. Runs a different ECU and a bigger intercooler. So it's quite grunty. And you can hear those tyres sort of making all, all the noise as well, those big treads. Now let's just take it off here. And suddenly, when we start to go off road, this is a seriously bumpy bit of track and you can hardly tell in this vehicle because it just absorbs the bumps like there's no tomorrow. This is its natural habitat, well apart from snow. It'd be good if we had some snow here, but uh, yeah, UK in November is noted for deep snow, minus 40 degrees.
normal parking spot, but uh, I parked it there on this ridge so I can really show you how the suspension works on this car. If you look at the front, that's right up in the wheel arch, uh, right compressed. And then if I look at the rear one, well, then that's extended down. So I'm right on a ridge here and the car sort of buckling over the two, but it's got enough suspension travel to do it. Um, to, so the wheels are still on the ground, even at this extreme angle. Um, that's full articulation. I think you can sort of tell that because it's got this um, belt in here, if you can see that where I'm pointing. Yeah, that, that belt there, that's tight. So that is full droop as it's termed. And then if I look at the suspension, that, that's the sound you can hear as you drive along because it's rose jointed suspension all round. So that there is no rubber to absorb that sort of noise. If I look underneath, what can we see here? It's got um, a, an uprated rear anti-roll bar as well. Um, it's a limited slip diff in here and you can't really tell. Let's have a little thing see it from here. Um, different tie rod here on the hole in the suspension here. That's, that's different on this car uh, just because of the amount of axle um, movement on it. What can we see from the front? Uh, we've got the sump guard, steering guard actually um, right at the front there. And then these special rods, let's see we just come round to this side, yeah, you can see the, the front suspension here. Again, Bill Stein race units uh, with a remote reservoir and also the, the rose joints, hence the noise. That also has got a strap on it, but I don't think, I don't, even at this axle, no, that's not quite at full articulation. <laughs> Mad as it may seem, what a bonkers thing. Um, also a unique suspension component, just that um, rod going up to the front axle. Um, that's part of the race spec bowler put on it. It also has a different transfer gearbox ratio as well, um, which adds performance. Um, just, well, it's lowered the gear so it has more performance, which is one of the requirements of this Austrian event. But I love seeing a, a Defender all jacked up like this. Right, this next bit is something I'm really impressed with with this car. Because they, they shrunk the diesel down to 2.2 litres and they thought, oh, that's not very big. And this is really very steep, this little bit I'm just going to take you up. But there's a just a little bit of a party trick up here. I'm just going to get low ratio. Are we in low ratio? Right, low first. And I'm going to just aim it at the hill like this. And there we go. Make it straight. Now, I can show you. I'm not using the pedals at all. This is as steep as I've got on this farm and it can go up on tick over, which I just can't believe. It's a nonsense. Mighty impressive. And yet, you know, it's quite a small engine. Can't see where I'm going. And it's really those giant tyres that are giving this immense amount of grip on these sort of conditions. There is no part I think this car can't go on this farm. And then we'll go back down. One thing it hasn't got um, on this car, part of the, all the mods on it, it has no ABS or anything or, um, that's been disconnected because you couldn't have the hydraulic handbrake if you had uh, ABS as well, it would get very upset. Right, now we're out here, I'm going to give you a proper tour around, starting with the interior. Okay, well it's sort of fairly normal Defender in here until you suddenly notice some um, key changes. The biggest, of course, is the seats. These Recaro race seats, well they're SVX seats, um, these, and they also have the FI uh, four-point harness as well. You then notice the, the roll cage, internal roll cage here, which then is a hole in the roof because it's bolted onto the one out the top as well. Um, these go further back as well, these seats, so it's not a bad driving position. I'm surprised it's still actually got the, the standard steering wheel on, but it has got the standard steering wheel uh, on this car. They're the trick switches, which I love uh, for the lights on the roof because they've actually got the um, kangaroo symbol on them. So I don't know if they're Australian spec or whatever, I'm not sure. 
Then we go to the middle of the car here, um, typical um, Defender, so um, six speed gearbox and then a high load transfer and diff lock for the center uh, diff. As I say, it's got a locking diff at the rear, so it's two locking diffs. Um, down here is a red button, um, which is the fire assist system, which you do not press unless you obviously see flames and smoke. This was actually a switch for the ABS, but it's um, disconnected. And being a, a stunt car sort of thing, it has a battery cut out here. So if the driver detects fire, he hits that and um, disconnects the battery in case it's electrical fire. The most important bit on this car is this little plaque saying it is the limited run SVX concept. So that's how you tell an original one of these um, because there seem to be plenty of fakes out there. And then there's this, which I'm really proud of. Um, this is the hydraulic handbrake. So you can flick the rear out on this car. Unfortunately, everything's been removed apart from the handbrake. But I think if you come back in a few months time, there might be a way that's been reconnected. Don't know how that might happen. What else is there? There's much more in here. There's a, oh, oh got here. Something strange. Um, oh, with, this is for the winch. We'll have a little look at that. Uh, you stand outside, you plug this in and then you, you work the winch remotely. I think that's it. Um, it's probably worth just looking behind the seat because there's something there as well. At the back here, um, where you've got these straps, which are a right nuisance if you sit in the back, but it's not the greatest place to sit because obviously the seats come further back um, with this example of these, these seats, um, and there's a bit upright, so it's not a lot of fun. And then down in the middle here, you have the um, canister for all the um, fire extinguisher. Um, that's where that lives. So there we go. Right, let's go and try some hills in this car. Quite a fun little testing hill just here. I think this will cope pretty easily. Built it just so I could muck about on motorbikes years ago. But this thing can do it. It's got such extraordinary axle articulation. It's wheels. I mean, it is amazing what this car can do. And if you actually look at the rear arches, they've all been cut away uh, because the wheels are so big, they needed more space to go up and down. The front, there's quite a lot of bodywork gone. And the rear, if you look in the, in the rear deck, you can just see this extra lump so the wheels can move up and down just a mega bit of kit. Proper boy's toy. Okay, now let's go into different parts of the farm. I'll just show you some of the other tricks this car can do. The main trick is just absorbing the bumps. Just that different suspension setup and those big wheels just make it ride way better than your regular Defender. And also the low tyre pressures as well really help. So you find yourself bowling along really quite rough bits of ground. This is, this is pretty rough and I'm sort of in third. Fourth. Wait, hang on a minute, it's a bit dumb, isn't it? Fifth. just can't do this in a regular Defender, you'd be bounced out of the seat by now. And it's also the fact it's got the power to do it. Now this hill, I can't get up in anything else. I can go down it in a Range Rover, but I certainly can't get up it. It's what I use the motorbikes on, is a little jump at the top, and it's basically vertical right at the top. Just have to take first and go. Up, up we go, just amazing. Just goes anywhere this car. That's where I want the handbrake to work. So there you go, I hope that's given you a bit of an insight in what the SVX uh, Concept Defender is all about. It's a hugely capable car. Um, all these extras, they're all for one purpose, to make this really good. The way it can swallow bumps, the way it can, it's got this more performance. I think it's highly impressive. It's a real favourite of mine of the garage. Um, and it's sad, isn't it, that the, the Fender has actually gone out of production. You know, I find this, you know, as time goes on, we seem to love it even more because it's a British icon. Is this the ultimate Defender? It's what I keep asking myself, but uh, I feel hugely privileged to own one of these vehicles. Um, I'm going to tweak it, I'm going to get it on the roads, I'm going to do some events and things. Um, but yeah, I'm really chuffed with this car. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe, keep following, 
more videos coming along very soon.